Okay, so I think we can start now. Uh, so my first question is, how many of you are from the medical field, like irrespective of medical or pharmacy, nursing? If you guys want, you can chat with me as well. So let me open the chat box. Uh, yes. So like how many of you are from the medical field, like pharmacy, nursing, allied sciences, anyone? Okay, you. Uh, others? Okay, uh, Dr. Devash, uh, Salva, okay, Safia, okay. So I'm expecting that you all are from the uh, medical field only. Myself, postgraduate, MD, Pharma. Okay, perfectly fine. Others? I'm expecting that you all are from the medical field only then. So the first thing what we are starting is the case report. Then afterwards, we will jump to the uh, database searching using PubMed and how to use codes in the PubMed part. Now, first thing what we are starting is the case report. So I'm going to share with you my own papers and my own experience as well, what we have seen and what we have reported. Now, usually what people are doing is like they are following BMJ case report guidelines but this is totally up to you if you are belonging to some other field because every field has their own journal nowadays. And if you feel that my paper is can be go like can be as like as a case report, then you can file. Nowadays, many people from the PharmD and the MD pharmacology people are filing a lot of case reports or case series with the respect to the drugs part. Uh, during the ward rounds, they might be noticing some. Uh, drug interaction or drug reactions and they are reporting such parts in the case reports as well but the biggest problem is uh, they don't have the proper guidance and they are directly targeting the non-scopus index so for the non for the scopus index journals or for the embase index journals you have to write case report that is very very important very new to the world or uh, something you might have done unique to treat or uh, make outcomes as a good for the patient so that's what will go into the case report. Now, the first thing is not limited to the BMJ case report. This is what we usually follow from the medical field people. And uh, the most important thing afterwards, what you all should be doing is like, you have to read the instructions for the author. Uh, if can someone remind me so I can show you like how to check the instructions as well after this class. Now, every journal will have their own templates, their own reference style, their own title style their own abstract style to write the case reports that you have to follow in whichever journal you are submitting the paper. We have noticed even I am also the reviewer for many Scopus Index journals and I'm noticing that people are just submitting their manuscript uh, without reading the author guidelines, uh, without changing the references as well. So this is the most common factor of rejecting journal papers in one shot. So you have to stick to the author guidelines of every journal and afterwards, uh, if you are doing a proper research or if you're writing any paper, whether it's a case report, case series, some templates you have to follow as per the journal that also you have to look for. Perfectly fine. Now, before starting the case report, few important parameters you should be knowing that is a patient consent because in case report, in case series, in prospective, uh, uh, articles you are taking a live patient data so we need a patient consent before publishing a case report case series or any research work suppose you wrote the very nice uh, case report or case series paper you have submitted to some journal and they will ask you to put the statement whether you have taken or not a patient consent if you have not then that paper will never be accepted so before proceeding with the paper publication or case report, try to get what a patient consent. As such, we don't have to take IC approval to write case report, case series, but on the single page, you can write the language and you can take patient consent. It includes your signature, witness signature, patient signature with date. That's it. So this is what is very important to write the patient consent. Now, also, you have to check the number of authors, whatever you are using. Uh, in many journals, they are up to allowing up to six individuals. Some pair, it is allowing up to five individuals. 
uh, I can remember there is one journal that is Tropical Doctors in which they are allowing up to six publications, sorry, uh, about six authors. BMJ allowing up to maximum of four authors, but uh, you have to check this part as such. To be on a research side, I can tell you that if your article is having only one uh, author, it's an issue as well. Uh, just give me two minutes. Uh, some, one important call is coming up. Just two minutes. Uh, yes, uh, I'm sorry. Now, uh, if any article, if you are seeing, which is having only one author, so it creates a big doubt while citing that paper. Why suppose uh, I am the uh, editor-in-chief in some journal and my friend want to publish one paper just for the promotion sake. So I can tell her, I can help you for this part. So what he or she will do, he or she will just put sometimes one name only. It creates a big dilemma for the researchers to cite this paper. Now, if you have multiple authors, like 10, 15, so we know that there is not even a significant role of some authors in that paper. So that's why uh, journals are nowadays getting strict day by day and they're creating certain rules out of it. Your article should be original. Uh, case reports, it's not like you are reporting something new in the world. So your that case report might be available somewhere as well. So whatever you are reporting should be unique in your own language and try to put one paragraph, something unique, what you have noticed or something, what you have performed unique. Like it might be a blood test, might be some investigation test, x-ray, ultrasound, something, uh, all the uh, reporting part. Do you have the agreement of all the authors? Now the most important thing is now, uh, sometimes what happens, names are only enough. Uh, I can share my own story with you all. Uh, we have one faculty, he is IBD expert, I can't take his name. Uh, so many of the authors uh, from England, from India as well, uh, they have reported his name as one of the authors. So uh, once you are submitting paper to any journal, so of course editor-in-chief or editors will see the author's list. So suddenly he got a call that this paper did you write and he said no. So sometimes what people are doing, suppose in this class we have uh, uh, Disha and Disha is a very nice researcher. Her name is only enough for the publication part. So what uh, her friends will do, they will put her name. That Disha name is there, so my paper will get published within a short time period. So to avoid such things, uh, what journals are doing nowadays, they have to ask, they are asking authors to submit author agreement in which uh, we have to write author's name their email address, their mobile number, and their signature. Once all done, this form you have to submit with your publication as well. If not, then journal will not proceed with your paper. You have to submit this agreement. Now, after submitting the paper, if you are lucky, you will get some corrections to work on. If you are getting the corrections to work on, that means your paper will might get accepted very soon now. So once uh, you submit the paper, you will get some corrections back to work upon. So once you did all the corrections, submit back the paper to from the certain link, whatever they are providing you. And if you are answering all the questions, if you are doing all the corrections, paper will get accepted. Some journals are allowing up to maximum of three time of uh, revision permitted. Suppose today I have one paper I have submitted and after a month I got some corrections. I did all the corrections and I submitted. Usually it will not happen. Paper will get accepted within a short time period once a revision has been submitted. Suppose one more time you got some corrections because those corrections as well will, will undergo review part. 
so you have to be very careful while answering all the reviewers comment and the questions whatever they have raised so some journals allowing you till five time of corrections some will allow you for only three time of correction that's it so you have to be very uh, crucial for this part do not ignore such important things the next thing what we have is the content in case report. The first part is title and the first line what we are telling is like do not include a case report in the title part. It's not that much hard and fast rule. If you want, you can include. Otherwise, there is no need to put as such. Some journals, uh, some papers will have impact automatically if you are putting a paper type in the title. Suppose I am doing one meta analysis, so I have to write that part in my title because it will increase my impact of paper going under review so writing a case report or not writing a case report in the title is totally up to you it's not the hard and fast rule what about summary now that this is nothing just the abstract part some journals will prefer to write summary and some prefer to write the abstract part some journals for the case report allowing up to only 150 words and some people and some journals are allowing up to 200 words. Now, usually it will not happen, but in the case of case report, case series, journal will ask you for the unstructured abstracts only, not the structured abstracts. Now, we have two type of abstracts for your reference, I'm telling you. One is unstructured and the other one what we have is the structured abstract. Now, what happened in the former part, you have to write the entire paragraph. There is no subdivisions. So even though you are writing the entire paragraph, the reader should be able to distinguish between the background, method, result, and conclusion. What about the structure abstract? You might have seen some papers, articles, in which the first part is background in the abstract, followed by the methodology, then result, and then conclusion. So you have to make subgroups in the abstract part. The first part is what? Background, then methodology, results and the conclusion part. This is known as what structured abstract. For the original articles, nowadays also for the review articles, journals are asking for structured abstract. So what to write in the method section for the review article, how you perform the database searching. So you should know how to do database searching as well if you are planning to go for systematic review or meta analysis as well. What about the background now? why this case report is important to publish. So you have to write the prevalent of the health problem and or you also have to mention why this case report play an important role in diagnosing or saving physician or saving patient life or economical outcomes as well. Now, what content we have to report in the case reports or case series? The first part is case presentation. So case presentation goes like Suppose uh, one patient come to your department, to your own OPD, and he or she will tell you that, sir, I, I was feeling very nauseating. I had vomiting two times. I had uh, diarrhea multiple times. I have this thing. I have that thing. So everything you have to report in a series, what patient have reported to you. Now, that's what, what we are telling. How did they present? You have to report entire thing, how patient presented to you in your OPD. Now you have to ask for the relevant history. Suppose my patient is having diabetic uh, retinopathy. Then I have to ask in your family, does any patient or anyone is having diabetes or some eye disorder? So if it is there, that means it plays a significant role for the reporting part. Remember in the case report, in the case series, there is no need to report the entire things. If Family history is significant, then only you have to report all the details about family medical history. Otherwise, right in a simple word, there was no significant medical history. That's it. Now, you have to report all the findings and how they influenced your decision. So, baseline parameters should be there. Whatever you are doing, CBC, X-ray, ultrasound, all those things. Now, do not use abbreviation for the disease and for the investigation part. Even though you are using the abbreviation part, you have to put in bracket and the full form as well. People, what they are doing nowadays is like they are putting, suppose they are putting short form, that is ABG, and in bracket, they are writing the full form. This is not the correct way of writing the full form. Now, so what you people should be doing, you should write the full form first. Uh, like suppose I am doing blood pressure. 
सो ब्लड प्रेशर राइट दी फुल फॉर्म फर्स्ट ब्लड प्रेशर इन ब्रैकेट देन राइट बी पी सिंपल टू नॉट गो इन दी इन्वर्टेड मैनर अदरवाइज यू विल गेट लॉट ऑफ करेक्शन बैक वॉट अबाउट दी इन्वेस्टिगेशन यू हैव टू रिपोर्ट रिमेंबर वन थिंग वन पेशेंट कम टू यू यू हैव टू रिपोर्ट दी एंटायर थिंग्स वॉट एवर पेशेंट इज टेलिंग टू यू एंड वॉट एवर बेस लाइन टेस्ट वॉट यू हैव परफॉर्म थिंकिंग ऑफ सम डिफरेंशियल डायग्नोसिस दैट ऑल टेस्ट वेदर इट इज ब्लड टेस्ट अल्ट्रासाउंड एक्सरे सी टी एम आर आई ऑल यू हैव टू रिपोर्ट नाउ द नेक्स्ट पार्ट वॉट यू हैव इज दी डिफरेंशियल डायग्नोसिस differential diagnosis can be a part of background can be a part of patient history but it is not relevant for the case report you cannot end your case report with some differential diagnosis uh i will share one example with you as well afterwards so in the case report you have to mention like what test you have performed and what diagnosis you have made up and that should be a cut point because uh, that case report depends on the diagnosis and the treatment part and the diagnostics part what you have performed to reach there because some other physician some other clinical pharmacist can read those paper and can say it is our own time so that's why do not try to report differential diagnosis you can report in the background but in the main section of diagnosis you have to report the exact diagnosis what you have found with the help of what treatment treatment again you have to write what treatment has been given whether it was surgery uh, whether it was supportive care or whether it was uh, physiotherapy or any other medication or the novel medication whatever you have given to the patient now outcome and follow up usually uh, follow up will not be there in many case report but outcome you have to report in every case report suppose uh, as i belong to the field of hepatology so what we are doing we are doing endoscopy and uh, we have some published endo vacuum therapies or as a case report now once you perform the endoscopic therapy or novel endoscopic management you have to monitor patient and what outcomes you got in the end uh, whether this technique improve or not my patient condition that you have to report without the outcome your case report is completely useless so just try to maintain or mention outcome as well if you are doing suppose uh, some drug intervention in your ward round and you have noticed that this drug can cause this part so what people are doing they will reduce the dose or they will stop the dose right so in this part you have to report as well once reaction occurred we have reduced the dose and afterwards patient improve patient improvement is your outcome that you have to report follow up if you are getting then good to go otherwise people will not report a follow up as well the next part what we have is the learning point this is a must required field for this publication so in this part you have to write what conditions what factors you have to notice if patient is coming to you with some certain disease and what treatment you can offer to such patients this is what you have to report in a case report uh, i can see one hands up uh, yes Uh, sir, for that outcome and follow up. Now, suppose some patients, what they do is like they take home in the middle of the treatment, say D A M A D A M A, right? Discharge against medical. Ah, yes. Advice. So, if uh, that is our uh, target uh, target uh, sample, so what should we do then, sir? Or you can just call those patients and ask. Are they doing well? That's it. Uh, okay, sir. Thank you. this is the best thing what you can do if patient is going for dama part uh, just call the patient and ask are you doing well or not that's it if he is fine to do fine to do then just report patient was completely fine perfect uh, okay, sir. now ah uh, yes please ask uh, it's clear that's what i was saying uh, okay uh, one more case i will share with you it was happened in my department as well so we got uh, no i will tell you why it is important for you people to remember to know the critical values of cbc of whatever test you are performing in your field so you should know all these parameters so i will share one real life case in order with you all in our department we got a 3 year old baby male baby we got and uh, he was having ascites uh, so what is ascites it is a fluid in the abdomen so it was around 2 liters fluid in the abdomen 
so we have sub, uh, we suspected might be some liver disease in that patient so we have uh, tapped the patient first to improve the outcomes because lot of fluid will suppress your diaphragm and it will cause difficulty in breathing when you are lying down so what we have done we have tapped the patient we have removed all the liquid and we have sent patient for the uh, ultrasound and to check whether liver is okay or not somehow we got that liver is completely fine there is no issue with the liver part because we were suspecting two differential diagnoses the first diagnosis what we were suspecting is the hemochromatosis and the wilson disease both are what a genetic disorder in wilson we have a lot of copper in hemochromatosis we have a lot of iron it will go and uh, uh, get into the liver and will damage liver and liver will proceed to fibrosis and the liver cancer afterwards he was expecting this two things so this two were what are differential now so what we have done we have performed ultrasound we have sent iron sample we have sent copper samples as well all came normal luckily what happened we have sent a cytus sample for tcdc that is total count and the differential count as well to check for the albumin WBC and other neutrophil count as well to detect the SBP. That SBP is what? Infection in the abdomen in the presence of ascites. Now we have noticed in ascites, it is very rarely will happen, but in ascites, albumin count was absent. Usually, patient with liver cirrhosis or patient with pancreas disease will develop ascites and they will have a little bit albumin in their ascites as well. From that, we are finding SAG, high SAG, low SAG. But surprisingly, in that patient, we got absence of uh, albumin level. That click us that something is wrong elsewhere. So we got the patient medical history and we found that when the baby was 2.5 years old, he underwent a corrective surgery of the urine bladder. And during the surgery, afterwards, everything went fine. And after six months, uh, that urine was leaking from the urinary bladder and that was collecting up in the stomach part or in the abdomen part which result in the formation of ascites. So we have reported this as a case report and then afterwards we have sent patient back to the department of urology for the corrective surgery afterwards. So you have to be very crucial of whatever test you are suggesting to a patient. And you should be knowing what outcome you're expecting. And if something is low, something is high, then you people should be knowing that what we can suspect afterwards. Just because we have the knowledge of albumin, in the ascites, we can suspect that something is wrong somewhere else. It's not with the liver or pancreas. So again, we have performed the uh, color flow Doppler about that, that patient and we found that that urine is leaking into the abdomen part. It's not liver or pancreas. So you can report such cases as well. Remember one thing, case reports are not limited to only a uh, surgical part or to any uh, treatment part. You can also report some novel techniques, whatever you have performed during the treatment part. So let me share one of my case report with you all. Uh, this is my case report, what we have reported uh, for the anastomotic leak. Uh, so what we have done is like, this is the leak, what we can see now. Let me change my color so you can see. So this is the uh, leak what we got and this is the rile tube and we have created the endo vacuum during the treatment part as well with, uh, by using all the possible things whatever we can get. This is the sponge what we got in the OT and we have created the endo vacuum therapy and we have reported this thing. This is all the collection and we have reported this thing and paper got published in the Scopus Index Journal. So papers are not limited to the medication part. You can report some novel things as well. Or if you are noticing that some drugs uh, we are using that is, that is not FDA approved, but still that you can report as a case report with the help of this drug, patient improves significantly. Such papers were at a peak level during the COVID time. During COVID time, lot of paper were published with respect to review article, case reports and case series as well. You might have known about the uh, different different drugs people were testing for COVID because there was no treatment as such. So you can report such uh, things as well. So if you're noticing that some patients is uh, taking some non-FDA drug and patient is improving, you can report that part as a case report. 
and uh, one more thing i left that is a discussion part in discussion always start with your own findings like whatever you are finding and you have to compare that findings with the other same published papers suppose in this class i am taking three individuals suppose i can take ankita i am taking myself and i am taking durga as well okay now suppose i found that lower serum serum creatinine is the potential predictors for the uh, AKI mortality or renal mortality. Okay, suppose Ankita found that increased level of creatinine will improve patient outcome. So we have to report this thing as well. In my paper, I found that decrease in the level of serum creatinine can be a predictor for the mortality among AKI patients. However, Ankita reported increase in serum creatinine was the predictor for the mortality suppose durga found the same result as mine that is decrease in serum creatinine can predict the mortality among aki patients right so i have to report that durga has reported the same findings with us however angita have reported the contraindication like, I call, like some different findings she has reported so everything you have to report in the discussion part as such and for the reference part, you can use Manley, Zotero, and the EndNote. EndNote is a paid version, so there's no, like, no need to pay money for it. Always go with Zotero if you are using the window desktop. I think Zotero is not for the Windows. It, uh, for the Manley, you can use Apple desktop as well. So if you are using uh, Apple, then go with the Mandalay. If you are using non-Apple, then go with the Zotero part as such. Reference management. I think on Tuesday we have a class on this. Zotero management. How to manage reference as well. And I will suggest one more thing. Learn properly how to reference management uh, by using some tools because it's going to help you afterwards in the big, big papers. Because nowadays in review articles, you have to put around 120 review articles. Uh, sorry, uh, 120 references. So you have to put comments and all those things and managing manually. It's a lot of time taking thing as well. And uh, as per the journals, we have to change as well our reference styling. In some journals, what we are doing, we have to put one like this. In some journals, we have to put one in the uppercase like this. In some journals, we have to put bracket one, bracket close. So Zotero will help you for this part. Okay, so do you have any doubt or any questions for me with respect to the case report? Anyone? Any doubts, any questions? Anyone? Okay, no so, others. It is clear, right? Yes, it's clear. Okay. Uh, one more thing I can tell you, like, uh, if you are putting a references, like, suppose you don't know where paper, that paper will go, always report your reference in the Vancouver style. It's a style of writing the reference that you can follow for the universal. 90% journals will accept this reference type. But still, try to learn properly uh, reference management tools like Zotero and Manley. It will help you afterwards. And suppose uh, you are reporting some x-rays or suppose you are reporting some MRI. So you have to be very specific. You have to put arrow over there. Okay, so let me check whether I'm having or not any this part. Okay, suppose... Uh, I'm reporting this part to my as a case report and I noticed that something is wrong with this uh, accident. Okay, so what I can do, I have to put arrow. So uh, with the use of some imaging tools, what you can do is like you can put some arrow into it. Suppose I found that uh, here we have a less contrast coming up. So I can put one big arrow here and I can suggest and I can write in my uh, below the image. This arrow indicate this part. 
So if you are handling any imaging part, you have to report this thing with the arrow where we have to see specifically with what it indicates. Simple. Correct? Any doubts? Anyone? No? Perfectly fine? I'm happy to answer so if you have any doubts or questions with me. Okay. The next thing what we are having now is the search literature for scientific publication and cases. Now this is the most important part if you are going for some systematic review or for meta-analysis. If you are planning a systematic review itself, it will take around four to five months. If you are planning for uh, advanced version of it, that is the meta-analysis itself, it will take around six to seven months. Now, out of seven months, I can guarantee tell you out of seven months of meta-analysis, three months will be only for the database searching and data extraction, but that's it. So you should know how to perform exact database searching and how to extract data out of it. Now, before it, you should be knowing some basics of literature search. Now, the first thing is what is scientific literature as such? This is nothing, just a principal medium for communicating the results of the scientific research. Suppose I am doing a research and I reported some unique outcomes. So that is what a scientific literature is. So what I'm doing, I'm just communicating my results to the world. I found that serum creatinine of this much can predict this much, that's it. So nothing what we are doing, we are just reporting our results to the research community, that's it. Now, two things what you all should remember is the primary literature and the secondary literature. So what is primary li uh, literature now? All the original articles, whether this is prospective, retrospective, but it should be what? Original article. Now. It can contain your journal papers, including your prospective and retrospective study, right? Your conference paper, that is what your abstract, whatever you are submitting for the uh, poster presentation. Then we have technical report, then we have thesis, then we have dissertations. Even though if you are finding something unique, that is, uh, suppose you are writing commentary or you like writing the uh, letter, that will also come for your primary literature. Everything should be original part of your own mind. That should be what a primary literature. So remember one thing, if you are dealing with the original research article, that will be what your primary literature. Now suppose you are writing a review article or suppose you are writing a handbook for how to manage hypertension in ward rounds or suppose you are writing the information leaflet for the patients. So what you guys are doing, you are collecting a lot of papers and out of those things, you are extracting the information for to create one review article. Perfectly fine. Yes or no? Anyone? Oh, sir, do you mind repeating it again, the whole thing? Ah, yes. So suppose uh, I am doing a research, I am taking patient data, I am collecting all the patient data and I am writing a paper irrespective of prospective status or the retrospective status, but I am collecting patient data and I'm reporting out of it something unique features. That will be what a primary literature. All the results of original scientific research will be what a primary literature. Irrespective of prospective or the retrospective, but that paper should be what a original scientific literature. Suppose I'm writing one abstract to submit in my some conference for the poster presentation that will be what your primary literature because that is a part of your original scientific research so whatever you are reporting as the original paper irrespective of prospective or retrospective this will come under what a primary literature right then what is secondary literature suppose you are writing a review article or you are writing a books for your people and you are writing the handbooks or you are creating the manuals or you are creating the information leaflet for your patients. So what you're going to do, you will collect all the papers on the same topic and you will start the extraction process out of it. So 
in papers what we are doing we are collecting a lot of papers and we are starting collecting the paper information out of it to write one entire big paper out of it right so this is what known as secondary literature if you are collecting others paper to uh, to remove or to extract the information out of it to create your own paper this is what a secondary literature the most commonly reported papers are review articles correct yes sir yes, yes. others i hope that this part is clear just remember one thing that if you are doing a original research irrespective of prospective or retrospective that research will be a part of what a primary literature and if you are going to a google and searching all the type of papers with respect to your research topic and you are extracting information out of it to write your own paper that will be what a secondary literature simple correct okay now there is one quiz for you i have two papers suppose let me mark it a and this is suppose b no i have wanted to tell me this a is what primary or secondary answer me it is i think secondary sir because you are collecting data on drugs ah, yes, for management of pathetic and stuff so far okay perfectly fine yes secondary sir there is a lot of work need to be done to get the information especially from as you suggested in the earlier case secondary literature from the books ah yes correctly fine because we are doing what a review article right so this is what a secondary literature what about the b this is primary or secondary anyone primary primary others primary primary right primary 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 yes it is primary so i hope this part is clear to everyone right yes sir yes sir yes. okay then i think we can proceed the next thing what we have is the peer reviewed and the gray literature again we have some questions for you people uh, let me just ignore all the content whatever we have on the ppt just try to listen to me see peer reviewed literature is like what suppose i am writing one case report or i am writing one case series or i am writing any review article or i am writing any sort of paper if it is going under review that will be what your peer reviewed literature correct suppose you are writing a paper you will submit a paper to some journal it will show under review that means your paper has been sent to the experts in that field those people what they will do they will read your paper they will put corrections to it they will ask you some questions out of it that means your paper underwent what review process we don't know what this reviewers are but we know this much that this reviewers are the expert in this field and they will raise some question they will check your paper out of it if paper is going under review or somebody is checking your paper that is what a peer reviewed literature and suppose i am writing something and i just publish on my linkedin on my whatsapp on my uh, google or on my blogs or in my website and there is nobody to check my papers so that will be what a gray literature if your paper is undergoing a proper review process this will be what a peer reviewed literature if there is no under review there is no review there is no corrections everything is about you then this is what a gray literature any doubts any questions sir i have a question here sir suppose uh, uh, the uh, our scholars work under the university Okay. and the university publishes its journal okay but that is journal uh, it's a university journal but it doesn't have any uh, what it calls corpus or web of science indexing no that is fine but uh, your people will be under gray literature i uh, no 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 
we literature is not like this path uh, suppose even though there are many journals uh, who are performing the review process but those papers are what a peer reviewed literature some colleges some institutions yeah. are preferring a uh, scopus index ambes index just for the promotion part and just to raise their name that's it but even as a researcher okay. i can suggest to people to publish your paper in the scopus index or the web of science uh, index journals if you don't have both then go for the ambes index journals three name i am giving you scopus the most commonly reported part is scopus index web of science and the ambes part that's it doesn't matter if your uh, college is having or not the scopus index but if papers are undergoing the review process proper review process then that paper will be what a peer reviewed literature okay yes. thank you others do you have any doubts or question with respect to this two parts no sir okay others disha ankita anirudh anyone mm -hmm. Ashina, uh, clear. Vishna, clear. Okay. Others, I'm happy to answer all the questions. Nisha, sir, one you... more doubt, sir. Ah, yes, sir. Please ask. Sir, now this even the Scopus or the Web of Science uh, or these journals, sir, they don't have the impact factor. Only they have the site score. No, sir. They do have the impact factor as well. Uh, they have, but uh, generally when we want to go for a like a publication in three months or six months like that uh, when we go for the web of science index or scopus index ah, okay. for example research journal of pharmaceutical and biological sciences it is okay. a it is a scopus index only but it doesn't have an impact factor. now how we create the impact for our publication okay so for it i will suggest is like write a good paper and try to target q1 q2 index if you think that paper is too good, what I have written, it has some potential impact. Always start with Q1 journals, Q1 indexed corpus journals. If you feel that you no know, something is missing, I'm not happy with that much with my paper. Try with Q2 index journals because people, even as a researchers, we don't prefer to read Q4 and Q3 journals. But for the publication, we can target Q3, Q4, but just try to maintain the limit of Q1. Write your paper that it should go for the top 10 journals. It will not go, of course, there, but you can target Q1 afterwards. So always target Q1 and Q2. If it is not getting anywhere in Q1, Q2, then try for Q3. But always try for Scopus Index only. Because there are big, big places in which they are not reading the impact factor. They are only checking the Scopus part, like whether Scopus is there or not. And if it is there, then which indexed Q1, Q2, Q3, Q4. If you are in Q1, Q2, you will get a little bit more famous compared to Q3 and Q4. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Others? Uh, sir, so impact factor uh, generally is shown in Q1 and Q2, sir. Others... No, it will come in all journals. It is not uh, limited to Scopus and non-Scopus. It will come to all journals. Uh, but I will tell you not, like, not to be focus more on the impact part because it is like if journal is having more the impact factor, that means more difficulty to publish in that journal. So that journal should be just targeted by the very unique people in this world who are very much expert. Even though if you want to can target, there is no limitation, but be aware. Like you should know what paper you have written and where it can go. So if you believe that my paper is too good to go, it can change something, it has some potential outcomes, always target Q1 because Q1 index journals will automatically will be having the nice impact factor, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Even my, my papers are there in Q1 that is of impact factor 10, 9 and all those things. But citations you might get, you might not get as well. One uh, of my paper, uh, let me show you one of my paper. I think this paper of only of mine. This novel therapy, this is published in JCEH. It is Q2. And in, in this paper, I'm having eight citations. It doesn't matter, but your paper should be having good outcomes out of it. Any doubts now? No, sir. Thank you. Okay. Any other? Like anyone? Nathan, Pratima, Nisha? Anyone? Lavia? 
Vishnu, T Naga, Swati, anyone? Okay. So I hope you all are clear with this two part peer review and the grey literature, right? Now, so once you are people submitting paper to any journal, you will get this type of blog on your screen in which what we are having, we are having submit new manuscript on which we all have to go. Once you click on it, you have to submit all the documents, whatever they are asking. Usually they will ask for the cover letter, title page, manuscript. Some people, some journals are suggesting to submit manuscript without title page and some will tell to submit like with title page. And they will ask for figure and table differently. And if you have any other information, then it will go in the supplementary file. That's it. This is all, what you all have to submit. So be uh, careful while making all these documents. Now, once paper is submitted, if it is going under review or suppose once paper is submitted, afterwards what will happen? This will become black and this will get activated. Submission bring process and one will come here. This one indicate what? One paper is there, what you have submitted. If you are submitting two, then two will come. Now, from this part, it will go with editor, under review, decision and process and all those things will happen. Now, once all things are done, suppose you got some corrections to work on. Now your paper will come in the revision part. Now, your paper, suppose it needs some correction, it will come up here, submission needing a revision, one. Now, once all the revision part has been done, if you have answered all the revisions, then what will happen? Your paper will come to revision being processed for the author. Again, your paper will undergo a proper review process. Within a week, you will get the result. But for the initial part, journal might take two to three months. Always check for the, uh, I'm not audible. Am I? Audible, sir. Audible. Audible, no? Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, where was I actually? Okay. Uh, this two to three months. Some journals will take around two to three months. And some journal will take around six months. Uh, one of my paper during the COVID time, it took around exact 12 months for the first decision. So you have to check the timeline, whatever they are taking for the paper publication or for the first decision. That is more important. For the first decision, how much time they are taking, as per it, select the journal. Now, suppose, uh, so once I click on it, I will get a next screen like this. Okay, it's not coming properly. Uh, so it's my own paper. It is published now. So it was about the information lifted for liver cirrhosis patient. So once I did all the corrections, I gave it back to the journal. It went under review. Now under review means this is what automatically peer reviewed paper. Right? If your paper is going a review process, then it will be what a peer reviewed literature. Correctly fine. Any doubts, any questions? What do you write uh, next to that development thing? Actually, uh, it's not coming properly. It's like uh, I developed the information lifted for liver cirrhosis patient. This paper is online. If you want, you can check up uh, with my name. It will come up. It is nothing but development and evaluation of patient information leaflet for liver cirrhosis patients. Nothing. So we got some corrections and we have done it and paper got accepted now. It is like an old image. But this paper is available online now. Done. So if paper is going a review process, then this literature will be what? A peer-reviewed literature. Okay. Any doubts? Any questions now? No, sir. No? Perfect. Now, let me give you one more example. This is the Wikipedia, the most commonly searched website among the UG people. Let's search Wikipedia. Let's read from it. So this is what? This is peer reviewed or the gray literature? Answer me. Anyone? Gray literature. Gray. Gray. Why, why gray? Karthik? Why not peer reviewed? Anybody, Anybody can publish, publish with the references. Yes. If you can all focus, we have an option here that is the edit. Right? So even though if you are going on the Wikipedia, you can edit the cirrhosis page 
even though it will track your ip you cannot write something abusive there so of course it going to track your ip address but even though you can edit this website right once you did the editing nobody is will going to check it whatever you have done so that is what a gray lit page but if you can see this edit option is coming nowhere in the this journal part once published once published that's it then afterwards nobody can change it okay but for the wikipedia you all people can try you can visit and you can click on edit it will ask you for your ip address and then you can start editing and no and no like nobody going to check it so this is what a gray literature this is what a gray literature perfectly fine what about slide share again the most commonly used applications by all of you for ppt Wait. sorry what Gray literature, no sir. Gray literature, perfectly fine. Others? Gray? Why gray? Can someone tell me why gray it is? So anybody can upload it into ah, the yes. site. Yes. So the reason is very clear. Anybody can make ID, log into it, upload your PPTs, published. Perfectly fine. Any doubts? Any questions now? No, sir. No one? Uh, sir, what is equator guidelines? Like how to submit the paper? Uh, DYD, you can contact me after the class. We can discuss all these things. Okay, no, 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 no. Perfectly fine. The next thing what we have is the PICO, the most important thing before starting your own research. Now we have to follow, some researchers will follow up to PICO, that is P-I-C-O, but I suggest to follow entire thing, that is PICO, that is P-I-C-O-S. So P is what your population or the problem, whatever you are taking. Suppose I am taking liver cirrhosis patients, so my P will be what? liver cirrhosis patient okay suppose uh, ankita is taking diabetic mellitus patient so p will be what diabetic mellitus the next thing what we have is the intervention what intervention you are doing it might be a drug it might be a surgery it might be a education intervention or any intervention of your choice you can perform it will come in the intervention part suppose uh, i want to check the role of uh, metformin among diabetic mellitus patients so my p will be what diabetic mellitus patient my i will be what metformin perfectly fine other thing what we have is the c that is comparison now suppose i want to compare metformin with other drug suppose i am taking sglt2 inhibitors okay this will be what my comparison and if you want you can take metformin in the comparison if you want you can take this part in the intervention part nobody will stop you but in the intervention always remember the drug of your aim will come if you want to check the efficacy of metformin then metformin will be what your intervention drug compare group will be placebo or any other drug whatever you are taking now question comes if i am doing the rct or a case control study even though i am performing the a randomized control trial in the retrospective way should i take placebo or not placebo of course you can take with some drug but placebo we all know that no effect will come as such so to give impact to your research outcome always try to take a drug in the comparison group that's it if you are taking placebo and the drug paper can get published no issue but if you are taking drug versus drug it will give you the more good impact so always try to target the research in which you can have two drugs to compare. You can take metformin, you can take other drugs as well. If you want, you can take two different doses as well. Suppose in intervention, I want to take metformin 0.5 gram. In compare, I want to take metformin 1 gram. Nobody will stop you. But you have to take drug versus drug. Do not take drug versus placebo. You can take, but impact will be less compared to drug versus drug. Okay. The next thing what we have is the outcome. Now, suppose I want to find uh, on three months, what will be the effect of metformin 
point five gram, one gram on HbA1c level. What about HRQO1? What about FBS? What about RBS? What about PPBS? If I want to check all these outcomes on three months on my patients who were on metformin, intervention, and the control group, this will be what my outcomes. Okay. Now, if you are doing a systematic review or if you are doing a meta analysis, you have to be very specific what type of studies you are taking. This will come where in the study design. Suppose I am taking RCTs, suppose I am taking case control studies, I am taking review articles, or I am taking any kind of prospective study that you have to report. Now, to give more impact to the journal, to the research outcomes, always try to revolve around RCTs or the case control studies. So for the intervention control group, always try to take drug versus drug to give more impact even though there is no issue with the placebo, but try to take drug versus drug. What about studies? You can take, there is no limitation and nobody will stop you, but always try to target randomized control trial or case control studies for the study design part. Okay. Any doubts, any questions? No, sir. No questions. Right. Okay. Now, suppose, uh, let's create our own Pico. So afterwards, we will go to PubMed search now. How to use all those things. Now suppose, I want to check the role of beta blockers. Beta blockers. And I want two drugs out of it. First, suppose I am taking Carvedilol and I am taking Propanolol. In liver cirrhosis patient, in liver cirrhosis patients, to check the outcomes in their mortality, in their quality of life, in change in portal hypertension, and decrease or remove decrease and outcomes. Outcomes like uh, esophageal varices, ascites, SBP. Okay, now let's together form the PICO part for it. Now I want P from your people. What is P in this condition? Liver cirrhosis. Uh, liver cirrhosis. Perfectly fine. Yes. So our P is what? A liver cirrhosis. What about intervention? Beta blocker, carbidolol and propanolol. Propanolol. Yes. Now suppose I want to compare drug versus drug then? Carbidolol and propanolol. Yes. So in I, I can put what? Carbidolol. And perfectly Yes, we can put, but take only one because what we are doing, we are taking in beta blocker, we are taking two drugs, right? We are comparing drug versus drug. So let's now uh, we can take carbidol or we can take open law. There is no uh, limitation. But suppose I want to check the role of carbidol because this is too good drug. Suppose I want to check intervention about the carbidol. What about compare group? Propanolol. Yes, perfectly. What about the outcomes now? Mortality, quality of life, and the various outcomes like SITs. Yes, perfectly fine. So I think this part is clear to everyone. Right? Yes, sir. Okay. Thank you, Pratima, for helping. Others? Uh, sir. Ah, uh, yes. If we're doing any observational studies, how we can write the outcome part? Outcome is totally up to your interest. Whatever you need to report, you can totally put up in the outcome part. There is no issue. If you are, if you want to find out whether uh, this drug will improve this or not, suppose I am taking uh, example of metformin. In outcome, I can take whether there is a change in HbA1c or not. So outcome is what you need to find out. It's totally up to you. In my title, I wanted to find about the HRQL, portal hypertension, mortality, EV, ascites, and all those things. This is what my own outcomes, what I was looking for. Outcomes you can make as per you, your findings, or as per your uh, field. Correct? I think it was Karthik. Yes, Karthik? Sir, in this uh, method, no. You can yes. search more than one outcomes. Of course you can search. 
okay sir there is no limitation on the outcomes but suppose if you are dealing with a multiple outcomes so what you can do afterwards create two groups out of it create primary outcomes and secondary outcomes primary will be the most important one suppose i want to check mortality it is more important for me what about portal hypertension if i can decrease it then nothing will happen all these things what about hrqol if it is good then patient will be happy what about secondary i can put all things over there i can put ascites i can put sbp i can put esophageal varices and i can put all others important like not that much but we can put in the secondary outcome correct dr devash yes sir okay so others any doubts any question with respect to pico part uh sir regarding study design what about the, the study design for any yeah. case report or uh, review article sir uh see uh, again there is no limitation on it if you want to work upon review article you can take study as a review article but for systematic review for meta analysis always try to target uh rcts and the uh case control studies it will give you more good impact okay sir right because i feel even though if you are taking review articles it will not have all the outcomes because review article is like what we are collecting data from the multiple papers and we are putting in our own language there is no number there is nothing for systematic review for meta analysis you have to extract data out of the paper it might be in the numbers as well for meta analysis only numbers will come up because for the meta analysis we have to perform some statistical analysis as well for that we have a separate software that is revman r e v m a n in which we can perform the meta analysis in that we have to input uh, we have to write the data what we have taken up from the papers and it will be what mean plus minus st and all those things will come up and in the end we will get one graph out of it uh if possible i can show my my own paper to you i just wrote uh i'll show you if i get the extra time out of it so in the meantime do you have any doubts or any question for me till now for the pico part no sir. others anyone it's clear clear no doubt no doubt no doubt perfectly fine okay the next step i will give you three important codes now for database searching whether you are targeting pubmed mbas or scopus you have to use this three important codes these codes are very simple it is what and or not remember all will come in capital letters not in small letters all capital and or not for wide database searching wide database searching you have to use or capital or in between the keywords whatever you are searching now suppose i want to find out uh, in my class i am happy to have dr devash dr disha ankita anam so what i will write divash or ankita or uh, disha or durga so in my search terms i am putting all these terms so i am happy whoever is coming in my class right suppose i am putting and now okay so suppose i am putting ankita and disha that's it that means i want these two people in my class now right suppose if i am putting not it is not if i am putting not suppose i am writing ankita not disha that means ankita will come to my class but disha uh, but uh, disha will not come to my class simple right this is what how you have to use this terms so for the broad term searching the initial searching always try to use or there is no role of not as such for you people and what today we are learning is more about or and the and part where to use and where to use or right now do you have any doubts or any questions for me i am happy to answer
एनिमल So, so we use these codes when we are searching for an article on the Google. Google Scholar, if you want, you can use in Google Scholar. There is no use for such a Boolean terms. This is known as Boolean term, first of all, and or not. This will be useful specifically for PubMed, Scopus, and AMBAS searching. Ah yes, Shrinath, we are going there now only. Now we will have hands-on training for PubMed search. Don't worry. So, do you have any doubts till now, with respect to and or not or pico part? No, sir. Oh, sir, for pico though, that uh, what does S stand for? So you didn't give the example. Study design. For... It's a study design. Oh, okay, sir. It's like case control, case series, review article, uh, case uh, control, retrospective, or prospective, randomized control trial, all those things. Okay, sir. Others? Any doubts? Any question for? Me? I'm I'm very happy to help. No one. Okay, so I will take it as a no. Then let me stop my screen now. Now, uh. First thing what I'm going to show you is the graphs of meta-analysis. Then I will show you how to search for author guidelines. Then we will jump to uh, PubMed search. Okay. So let me know if you can see my screen. Okay. I'm sharing now. Uh, screen one, screen two. I'm having two screens. So do let me know what can you can see now. Okay. Let me share screen one only. Okay, is it visible to all of you? Let me open the chat box option as well. Your desktop, perfectly fine. Okay, now let me open my meta analysis so I can show you how graphs look like. Now, once you are doing the PubMed search, see here what I have done. I have done the PubMed search, I have done the Scopus search, I have done the MBA search, and out of it, I am getting how much? Seven eight two zero articles. This is when we are getting once once we have all the filtering out. So once you filter all the papers in the initial search, I got this much. We have to remove duplication. We have to remove uh, other papers as well. Uh, so initially it might be in lakhs, but after putting all the filters, we got in thousands afterward. Now, as we are taking PubMed, we are taking Scopus, we are taking Embase. So we can expect that there might be some duplication as well. So we have to remove those duplications. So after removing, we have how much? 5853. That's it. Now, afterwards, we have removed more articles out of it because they were not matching with that uh, uh, PICO because they were uh, letter to editor, systematic review, meta-analysis, abstract, commentaries, because I was working on the RCTs and case control. That's it. So my focus were more on the RCTs. So I removed all the other papers from the database search. Now, in the end, I got what? Six papers, that's it. So initially, we were having how much? In lakhs. After we jumped to thousands, now we jump to in tens. That's it. So this is how you have to report in every systematic and meta-analysis as well. This part. This is very important, first of all. How to report this thing? Search, permit, scopus, embase. Take all the information. Initial search, you might get around in paper in lakhs. Then... You have to remove duplicates, then you have to search title by title. Once all titles search, then you have to read abstract. Once you read all the abstract, then you have to read the entire paper to extract the information out of it. Now, the next thing what we have is a risk of bias in which we have to answer this thing. This is a part of Rayman software only. You can report this thing automatically. It will come. Now, this is how the graphs come like. Now, as we have discussed, I was checking the portal hypertension among my patients. So this is like a part of PhD. Now I am taking two drugs, Carva and Propanol. So I found that uh, this drug is more uh, useful to reduce what hepatic venous pressure gradient. 
Bec why? I, like, how can I tell this thing? Because my the star dot is coming in the favor of Kavidilol. Perfectly fine. This is not a part of this today's webinar, but I think you should know all this part as well if you are going for a proper meta analysis. If you want, we can have a separate class on it. How to use Rayman software for this? Uh, you should have the knowledge of a little bit statistics as well because we have to deal with i square, chi square as well, and the z value as well with p value as well. So let me show you one more graph, a C part in which the star is coming on the middle line. That means zero. That means there is no role of both the drugs. Uh, I have second outcomes as well, in which I was checking heart rate, cardiac output, mean pulmonary artery pressure, all those things, and I found all the graphs. So this is what you have to report in the meta-analysis. So remember one thing, if you want to perform systematic review, you can perform. But to perform meta-analysis, you have to start with systematic review. Completely fine. Now let me go back to my Google so I can show you database searching. Okay, so one of our paper is currently under review. We got the revisions. Okay, so when you click on it, you will get what? Decision in process now. This indicate what? That the corrections what we have done, we have submitted. Paper went under review. Now our results are ready. Probably by today or by tomorrow, we will get the uh, decision from the journal automatically. So that means this paper is what now? Peer reviewed, right? Or a gray literature. Can someone answer me? This paper is what? Peer review, sir. Peer review. Perfectly fine. Okay. The next thing what we have is the author guidelines. Suppose if you are going to some journal. Uh, okay. Let me take this journal only. See, uh, here we have all the time periods. If your paper is undergoing the open access, this journal, a JCEH, is the uh, dual journal. That means it has a subscription part and the open access part. So if you want to go for the open access part, you have to pay how much? $3150. But if you want, you can select the... Uh, subscription part as well in which only abstract will be available to the, all the viewers and they, if they want to read your paper they have to pay some dollars like eight nine dollars and in, if in your college if you have access to all those papers then it will automatically open up like uh, in my place we do have access to open it so like we don't have to pay as well and if I submit my paper in JCEH then I, I don't have to pay this much as well because my place has the uh, collaboration with the Scopus Index Journal. So we don't have to pay this much money. It will directly become open access. Now to check the author guidelines, go to publish and the call, no. Where it is? Ah, yes, guide for author. In the publish part, we have submit your articles and we have guide for authors. So once you click on it, you will have the entire page of this part. What we are looking for, what we need. Uh, if you are submitting the proper research, then you should have the maximum length of 6,000 words, including abstract, reference table, and all those things. Your structured abstract must be not actually around how much, this much words. So you have to read all the guidelines before submitting paper to any journal. Suppose if I'm writing a paper, to submit in this journal, so I have to read the entire author guidelines. Suppose you are submitting a review article, read this paragraph, whatever they want from you. Suppose you are submitting <clears throat> a liver transplant forum, so you have to read this paragraph. That's it. And if you search as well, you will get the reference part as well. Now, for the reference part, they will let you know like in which format we need the reference. Is it Vancouver or which number format we have? See, they have examples as well. In this format, we need the reference type. If you are using a book, then cite book in this pattern. If you are using the journal papers, use this pattern. Perfectly fine. Any doubts, any questions? No, sir. Anyone? No doubts? Others? Anirudh, Ankita, Disha, anyone? Turka, DYD, Fatima, anyone? Harita, Harsh Patel, Karthik, Lavia, anyone? 
I am happy to answer. No? Okay, perfectly fine. Then I think we can jump to PubMed search now. So I hope you all are ready now with your desktops. You can take few minutes. Then we can go to PubMed search. Ah, yes, I know, because we are waiting for your confirmation. So regarding equator guidelines? Of equator guidelines, uh, you have to search. Uh, you, what you can do is like, you can open that journal and you can uh, go to the uh, published part and search for the guidelines. That's it. Okay. I'm not I'm not aware of the equator guidelines, but you have to open that journal and you have to read the author guidelines. And if you okay. want, if you have the access, and then you can share that link with me right now in the chat box, so we can discuss as well. Uh, okay, so I look into it. Yes. Okay, perfectly fine. So I hope you all are ready now with your laptops for PubMed search. Yes or no? Ready? Okay. So first thing first, open the Google, go to your Chrome, click on the new tab, click PubMed, and you will get a permit. No, this is not the permit. Okay, let me come here. Suppose I am searching for the permit. So I will go, I will click, I search permit and I will get the screen on the permit. Are you all here? Okay, so let me share this in the chat box with you all. Done? Yes, sir. Others, did you get the screen? Yes, sir. Okay. The next thing, what you are going to do, click on advanced. Can you all see advanced? Click on advanced. Done. All done. Yes, sir. Okay. Now, suppose uh, if we want to work on the liver cirrhosis only, let me take my paper only out of it. And if you want, you can give me your suggestions as well, then, and we can practice as well. Now, we should know the proper key terms what people can put up in the paper for that disease or for that part, whatever you are doing on research on. Now, suppose I am taking liver cirrhosis patients. So, what I can write? Liver cirrhosis. Right? People also call it as cirrhosis. So what I will use? I will use or. That means I am happy to have all the titles who are having liver cirrhosis. If it is not, then I am happy with cirrhosis as well. Right? That's why I am using what? Or. Do not use and. Use or. Now, it is also known as cirrhosis. It is also known as decompensated cirrhosis. Right, it is also known as compensated cirrhosis. These are all the part of cirrhosis only. We have different stages. Compensated cirrhosis. Perfectly fine. So what I'm doing, I'm putting all the important key terms, what people usually call it as, then or. That means I'm happy with all the research titles who contain uh, cirrhosis or liver cirrhosis or DC or CC. I'm completely happy. But those titles should contain at least one of the following. That is what? CC, DC, cirrhosis and the liver cirrhosis. Perfectly fine. Next, click on add. Now, click on this down arrow. Click on add to history. Once done, see how much articles I'm getting. 4,32,000. It is too much, right? Yes or no? Yes. So yes, I sir. hope you all can follow me now. In the field part here, write liver cirrhosis, use or cirrhosis or, and you can use different keywords as well, what people use, like what are they are calling it. Done? 
this step done with you all yes sir let me let me share this thing in the chat box so you can just copy paste done now next thing what we were having is the drug part right intervention comparison remember that two drugs now it was also known as beta blockers because both come under what beta blockers so you have to think what researcher can put in a title because title will be very unique title should be very catchy so and some uh, people what they do they, they do not disclose the important drug in the title so what they will do they will just put beta blocker so beta blocker or they can put propanolol or they can put carvidilol carvid carvidilol or they can put what non selective beta block or they can put what short form nsbb right now again click on add add to history now see i'm getting how much 1 lakh 10 thousand results right now by suppose i am using and term what we have learned now do not use and it will create a very short database search why because always we have to search for or because i am happy whether this paper title contain beta blocker it contain propanolol, contain NSBB, or contain carbidolol. I am happy, but the title should contain one of the following. Now, suppose I am using the same uh, for your example. I am using liver cirrhosis, and I am putting and now. Okay, I am putting cirrhosis again, and again I am putting decompensated cirrhosis. Again and, and I am putting what compensated cirrhosis. P E N S A E. Okay. Now this indicate what? I will put a code. This is code. And now what I'm telling PubMed now, I want all the research titles in which every key term should be there. Liver cirrhosis, cirrhosis, DC, and CC. Right. If I'm putting this and term, this indicate what? that i'm telling permit i want all the titles all the research papers in the title i am having this all the terms right click on add add to history now see the difference between the code error i am putting or 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 and i have around how much 4.3 lakh studies with the use of and i'm getting how much only 1.5 k studies a big difference is coming up right Yes or no? Yes, sir. Others? Any doubts till now? No. No? Others? Uh, sir, uh, while searching, no, suppose you added, like you're supposed to add uh, or in caps, right? So you accidentally added uh, in uh, silver case letters. Is there a way to edit it in the same way screen? Way to edit it? Without Nothing. like without like you know uh, doing the uh, without deleting the query and adding it again is there any method to do that uh, no we have to put again there is no like editing option is coming up because the entire things is there coded so always use this uh, capital word because pubmed will catch this capital words and or not okay now uh, if you can remember the supplementary file what we have discussed. So this is what also you have to report. Okay, so let me open one word file. So I will show you how to report all these things as well. Uh, if I have the... Let me search if I have my database searching as well. So I can show this to you. Now, uh, see what we have, our next step will be once all done once all these things are done no okay so what you will do uh okay let, let it be we have one more step to cover up now ignore this third step this hashtag three because this is what the error in the coding that is and because this is common sense because nobody articles will put all the terms in the title okay so always use or in the broad primary search now let me delete it 
Okay. Now we have what one and two. Now how to combine it? Use and now because I am happy with both the things. Now what I am telling PubMed? See, I want hashtag one and hashtag two together. Click on add, add to history. See, now this is my final search. Hashtag one and hashtag two. Okay. Now with this thing, I'm telling PubMed, I want all the articles in which I have all these key terms. I'm happy if title is having liver cirrhosis or beta blocker. I'm happy whether uh, title is having liver cirrhosis or propanolol. I'm happy whether title is having cirrhosis or beta blocker. But I need articles combining with those two key terms. Right? So what we are doing, we are putting an in between. Hashtag one, hashtag one and hashtag two. Correct? Yes or no? Yes, any doubts? Any confusions yes, now? Uh, sorry, what? No doubts? Perfect. The next step will be what? Click on the third part because this is our final term. Click on this part. Okay. Now I'm getting how much studies? 2271. Right? Now we have to put filters out of it. Now once you are doing systematic review or you are doing any uh, big papers out of it, suppose you are doing a research article, you are doing systematic review or you are doing some meta-analysis as well. So you always try to take research publication in the last 10 years. So what I will do, I will put multiple filters now. I don't want all the papers. I want only randomized control trials. I want only publication papers who published in the last 10 years. Click on last 10 years. Once done, see number significantly decreased. It is 52 now, right? Yes or no? Yes, sir. Correctly, fine. Others, any doubt, any questions? Anyone? Any doubts, any questions? Uh, so is there any significance of adding word in? Hold on. Uh, no, nothing. There is no role of putting this semicolons. There is no role of it. Use and or not. That's it. No, right. Okay, okay, okay. Okay, perfectly fine. Now, once you get all this result, you have to import it in the Excel sheet. So what you're going to do, click on send to, click on citation manager in my laptop. I'm using Zotero. So what I will do, I will activate the Zotero first. Uh, just wait a minute. Okay, it is activated now. Now what I will do, send to, click on citation manager. I want this all the papers, all this 52 articles in my Zotero. So what I will do, click to send to, click to citation manager because Zotero is what? A citation manager. Click on citation manager. Now this option will come all result on this page do not click this part click on all result because on this page if i click on this part on this page i'm having how much only 10 articles not all 52 articles so what i will do click on all result then create a file now it is there in my desktop so what i will do next i will open my zotero right then click on file, click on import. Okay, all done. Now click on import, select the first option automatically, default only, click on next. And I will select download. This is my file from today. Click on it, open. Now please import it files. Yes, I want copy file to Zotero. Okay, next. It is importing now. See, all done. 52 items were imported. Perfectly fine. Now I have all the titles. I have all the information. If I click on it, I'm getting all things here. Abstract, all the authors, title, 
i am getting all the information out of it right DOI oh, so is this uh, software free to use or is this paid? Ah, yes zotero zotero and mandalay is completely free to use do not go with the annote annote is like little bit high file but it's a paid software go with the zotero and the mandalay part it is completely free to use if you are using zotero if you are using windows go with zotero because zotero do not support uh, apple desktops if you are a uh, apple user then go with the mandalay part fine and if you guys want you can work in the group as well suppose in this class we have around 30 individuals suppose anirudh dr divash dr mercy dr dana are working together on a single paper <laughs> so what they can do they can create a library as well a same group on the uh, so taro so they all can work together while putting the references in their own paper this part i will not touch as such so what we can do next is like we have to import zotero into the excel sheet for potential data extraction so what i will do again click on file and click on export library okay select the file first this is your file right click on this part and import export collection now i want csv of course i want the excel part click on okay and i want to select save this thing suppose in the download part as well i will put class paper writing and save it is done now let me open my download and let me open my yes now here we have all the information from the paper okay here we have keys here we have title publication year we have author's name we have title okay let me expand it and we have publication as well we have isbn we have issn we have doi we have abstract as well we have the abstract things here all things are here so for the data extraction what you have to do do not check the entire things remove useless things remove key item type authors we need publication don't need this all part you can remove no we need abstract so remove all these things then keep publication authors title abstract remove all other things done now once done so what you will do first the first step of database searching is like screen the title if i want randomized control trial read the title first okay comparison of carbidrop propen and all i think this might be your rct okay i'm selecting it now this is what is it matching my paper it is not matching my paper because it is dealing with what metabolics so what i will do i will mark it as red because i have to remove it beta blockers to prevent decompensation of cirrhosis okay randomized control trial placebo control perfectly fine so i will take it so if you want you can just uh, change the color as per you like red remove green take now suppose uh, let me randomly mark it for you people to clear it suppose out of this 52 i am marking a uh, few papers red those were not matching my criteria suppose this is all not matching my criteria all the red one the next thing what i will do is like i have to read the abstract of all the selected papers this paper i selected go to the abstract part read the entire abstract if it is matching with your pico then change the color of abstract or suppose if i want i can change this part to yellow color ah, this is the paper i want to read the entire paper now so once title is screened you got few papers out of it now read the abstract suppose you have around 50 papers out of it all red we have removed in our hand we have 30 papers automatically so of the 30 papers we have to read all the abstract possible might happen out of 30 you might be having not 24 papers 
so for that 24 papers you have to extract the entire paper you have to read the entire paper and you have to create further categories as well afterwards uh, suppose like this author name uh, suppose the paper was dealing with the sbp so right sbp information yes or no what about ascites yes or no what about uh, portal hypertension parameters mean plus minus sg what about jvp uh, ah yes uh, so how do you import that file into Zotero, that downloaded uh, file? How do you import it into Zotero? Zotero? In the Zotero. Uh, yes, sir. Into the Zotero. Into the Zotero. Perfectly fine. So uh, go back to this part, click on Send to and Citation Manager. Yes, sir. Done. Done? Yes, sir. Okay, let me check any other questions we have or not. So, like you, when you do all that, you download this file which is in M NBIB format, right? So, that file, how do you open it in Zotero? Is my question, not like the initial steps. Sir. You have that option will come there automatically in the Zotero, like which file you are importing. Done. Uh, no, sir. <laughs> Not done. Uh, like at which step you are stuck right now? Uh, like uh, when I open Zotero, uh, uh, it doesn't show what it, whatever it's showing it in your thing. Do you uh, do do you mind if I share my screen for a moment, sir? Yes, of course, of course. Let me stop my sharing once. Okay, let's do it now. Sir, I'm stuck in this thing. And I've already downloaded the NBIB file, sir. Uh, just remove, uh, just minimize this part. Go to that, that Zotero, that, no, no. Open that permit search ones. Uh, give me a moment. Uh, okay, send to uh, citation manager. Uh, All result, create file. Yeah, uh, create file. Done. Okay. okay. Now go to uh, Zotero. Mm, okay. Then click on file. A file. On the top. Yes, import. Sir. Import. Oh, okay. Yes, ah, sir. Next. Next. Mm. Now search your file. Okay. Click on it. Open. Yes, next. Next. Okay, sir. Done. Yeah. Right? Thank you. Sir. Yes, sir. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Okay, so let me share my screen back. So this was all about this part. So uh, the next thing, uh, okay, Excel thing. Okay, for Excel thing, suppose uh, my folder is this part, permit one and two, all this thing, whatever I'm working on, okay. Just click right, click on export collection. Once done, select CVs, uh, CSV automatically because we need in the abstract part. Uh, so we need the Excel part and click on okay. Once done, click on OK. You can rename the file and select the full file location and then save. Once done, you will get the Excel out of it automatically. And here we have the Excel like this. For duplication, for duplication directly, you can use Excel as well. We can do in Mandalay as well, we can do in Zotero as well, but I prefer to do in uh, this part because sometimes I have noticed that in Zotero and Mandalay, I have missed some important part while duplication so it's a big issue so what we can do is like uh, it's like select this part okay up to this part then go to data and remove duplicate remove duplicates remove no duplicate value were found if not this part then what you can do select and you can go to insert sorry home then we have conditional formatting then highlight cell rules, duplicate values. 
now suppose i want all the duplicates to be what uh, yellow fill with a dark yellow but no suppose i can take okay i can take this part okay see nothing is coming in green color that means there is no duplication right uh, let me give you one more thing uh, you people might do some mistakes if you are doing all these things suppose i went to conditional formatting i click on highlight cell rules i select duplicates and i am taking all the red text highlight the duplication part in the red color now suppose uh, this two things come in a red color afterwards okay and this two things are same in a red color again do not select all red and remove all red okay remove only one part the biggest default of excel is it will remove all together see suppose uh, okay let me give you a live example out of it suppose i am taking this and i am putting here See, it changed to green automatically. That means it is duplicated. Let me take this part and put me here as well. See, again, changed to green automatically because our code were there. At, at, I wanted a green color for duplication part. Okay. Now, this indicates that this green colors are duplicated somewhere else. Do not randomly select all the green and delete in one shot. This, what it will do, it will remove the original draft as well so what you have to do delete only once suppose i know this 36 number is a duplicate of what 55 number so what i can do i can just remove 36 only delete see color change to white automatically right yes sir Finat, done Okay, now if you want, if you are comfortable for this part, then go to conditional formatting, go to uh, the first option, then select duplicate values, select whatever you want, the color of your choice, then done, click on OK, you will get all the duplicates out of it. Now in this title, in this paper, I can see that this and this are duplicate. So what I can do, do not select both and delete, select only one and delete. See, it automatically changed to different color. That means now there is no duplication, right? If you are happy, then do this. Otherwise, select all these things, whatever you are handling. Then go to data, remove duplicates, click on OK. No duplicate values found. If it is there, it will remove the only one file, not all the files. It's totally up to you, whatever you are feeling good to go. So now do we have any doubts or any questions? So if you people can practice the use of and or not, the same rule we have to follow for Ambase and the Scopus search index. But the problem is Ambase and Scopus, you cannot access openly. You have to check with your library. You have to check with your college whether they have or not the subscription of Ambase or uh, uh, Scopus. Once you have, then, then you can search. But the rules are same, and or not. Simple. Now, do we have any doubts or any questions for? Anyone? No. Sorry, what? No, sir. Okay. Others? Any doubts, any questions with respect to case reports? Pico and or not database searching Zotero anyone anyone any no, doubts sir. any questions Disha Ankita Anirudh Anam anyone. Pratima, uh, Pratima, I think uh, on Tuesday you have a class on this thing. I think Dr. Pooja BM is there for this class and she will teach you all this step by step, all the things. Do not worry. She will teach you the exact use of Zotero as well. 
how to use Otero for reference and all those things. Others? Durga, DYD, Fatima, anyone? Harita, Hush Patel, Karthik, Lavia, anyone? Nisha, Najia, anyone? Okay. No doubts, right? Okay. She has said something. Um, so I just uh, sent the equator guidelines uh, link sir, in the chat. Uh, we can look at it later. Oh, okay, this is different. This is not uh, what you were asking. This is different thing. Okay, let me open for all of you. See, if you are doing some type of paper, like you are doing a randomized control trial, you are doing systematic review, you are performing meta-analysis. So you have to follow some guidelines what you have to report as well that this paper was done with the basis of on the this part. Okay, uh, let me share my own paper with you, that systematic review, what I have done, uh, so I can show you the exact live results as well. Uh, the paper is a role of... Okay. See, this is my own paper. I have published on the uh, systematic review. For this paper, I got the invitation, so let me open it. Also, I'm getting a lot of messages from the people that I got this invitation from the journal, should I go or not. See, Scopus Index Journals, Ambus Index Journals, they will never message you like anything. Okay, so you have to be very crucial by submitting your paper to any journal if they're asking you. Scopus, Ambase, and the Web of Science will never mail you for the scope paper submission. So you have to give some good impact to get some invitation out of it. And my team and I only get this invitation for this review of uh, systematic review and we have published this paper, it is Scopus Index. Now, this is the guidelines, papers, research paper I have found and I in the end I have only research articles. Now, criteria this is done. Now, what she was asking was here only somewhere. Uh, risk of bias outcomes. We have mentioned the Prisma guidelines we have followed. Registration part also you have to perform in the Prospero. Do not forget it. Ah, yes, here it is. Uh, the study was performed according to the Prisma guidelines. And Prisma, what we have to follow for systematic reviews. This is what we are having here as well. Let me open that part, what you have sent. Systematic review. Yes, Prisma. So these are nothing. These are the guidelines what you have to report in the paper publication. Paper formatting that you have to follow as per the journal guidelines. My reference style, my, sub, my, my subtitles, my titles, how it will come. All these things you have to follow from the journal guidelines. These are the guidelines for the specific paper reporting. So once you click on it, you will get some big, big questionnaires. What you have to fill that uh, this part is on paper number four. Uh, this part is on paper number nine. Uh, let me share something. If I have this in, then I can show you. Okay. Let me see. Okay. Give me two more minutes. I will show you if I have this thing. Okay, sir. Because I only have filled this part, so I know uh, meta analysis. Uh, no, this is not. I'm not getting that part, but uh, you have to fill these things. Uh, two big, big, like, uh, big forms will come that you have to fill. Prisma chart figure. Uh, that this is the Prisma chart figure, what you have to make. And I'm not getting that guidelines. Okay, no issues. So what you can do is like you can, suppose if you are working on the randomized control trial, then you have to be stick with the course code guidelines. So if you click on it, then you will get some certain questionnaire to work upon 
okay here we have then we can take it now all done now you have to fill this form and then you have to report submit the same to the journal as well now my title and abstract is on page what read this check items what they are telling to you then my title is on where on my page one then write one okay this is not editable okay no issues then introduction part scientific background is where on which page write the page number there same you have to read the items and just mention the page number where it is that's it once done submit this thing same with the paper while paper submission done okay sir thank you no worries others anyone and you have to mention this thing as well that our paper was performed as per the prisma guidelines with the reference as well anyone okay. others do you have any doubts questions for me i'm happy to clear sir okay thank you thank you okay okay none others then i think we can wind up now there is no questions or doubts for me no doubts sir thank you so much for the okay class. so always just i will give one tip always work on the pico part once pico is done then you can just go blindly do not plan your research here and there first plan picos properly then start database search okay then i think we can wind up if there is no more questions for me as such okay thank you so much everyone we can wind up now